Okay, everyone, this is Dr. Kondrat, and this is the September 2012 coaching call, and happy Labor Day to everyone. And uh, the coaching calls are the first Monday of every month, and the purpose of these calls is to help you get the best results with your microcurrent and alternative treatments. And the webinars will be recorded, so those of you that uh, don't have the time to join us on Monday, or if you can't stay for the whole record, uh, recording, um, you can always go back and uh, listen at your convenience, and I'll be sending you a link uh, for that. So let me see if we can um, begin. I'm really happy. Uh, with the release of my new book, The Ten Essentials to Save Your Sight. And we are offering the book at a discount. Of course, those of you that attended the three-day program will get a copy of this book uh, for uh, as part of the program. But in case you wanted to order additional books for your friends, uh, give the office a call, or I'll be sending you a link uh, to order the book. I'm excited about our acute care homeopathic course. It's being offered. We're going to be starting October the 27th, which is just right around the corner. And you'll learn principles of healing that will change you and your health forever. And I just wanted to share with you a couple of phenomenal events that occurred this month. You may think these things can happen. They're rare. They're exaggerated. But this is the kind of results that you get with homeopathy. And of course, homeopathy is an integral part of my practice. And we use it to treat all of our patients uh, when they come for the three-day program. My office manager uh, received some horrible news about a death in her family and was in a state of hysteria. After a few homeopathic pellets, it immediately put her into a calm state. My receptionist developed throbbing headache and nausea. She wanted to leave work, but a few homeopathic pellets specific for headaches and nausea, uh, in a matter of seconds, the hair headaches went away. And these are the kind of things you see with homeopathy. And it's really not out of reach for the average individual to learn these basic concepts. And this is one of the reasons why we're having the acute care homeopathic course. A couple other examples, uh, a patient's sister who was attending our three-day program developed some agonizing menstrual cramps, and I gave her some homeopathic pellets for cramps, and she was really shocked how quickly the pain uh, went away. My wife also had a very positive experience with homeopathy. She developed severe nausea and irritability and claimed that nothing can help. She didn't want to take anything, just wanted me to leave her alone, but I insisted that she try to take a few homeopathic pellets, and immediately her nausea and irritability went away. So these are the kind of things that homeopathy can help. Now, this is an acute care course, and by that I mean you're going to be learning things kind of like first aid, emergency situations. It's not really a course to learn chronic prescribing. Like chronic prescribing is something that has been going on in your body for a long period of time, like arthritis, glaucoma, macular degeneration, asthma, breathing problems. These types of things require a little bit more expertise with homeopathy. But acute problems respond very well, very quickly with homeopathy. And this is the way that many people uh, first become introduced to homeopathy. As I mentioned, there'll be monthly webinars. We'll be meeting one Saturday a month for seven hours. Yes, it'll be a seven-hour webinar, uh, but I'll try to entertain you during those seven hours, and we will have a break. Everything will be recorded, so you'll be able to listen to them at a later date. I also will be sending you some uh, audio material uh, from some other homeopathic classes that were uh, conducted. And you'll, you will be having homework assignments. You'll have reading assignments. Uh, you'll be having some cases to go over. 
So it's really a, a, an interactive uh, program that is to help you learn the basics. Now, if you wanted to get more information about the course, you can go to uh, healingthei.com forward slash course dot html. The cost of the course is $650. Uh, one payment, or you can make monthly payments of $120. So I hope some of you will join me for this course. I'm really excited to be offering this course to enable people to learn homeopathy, to begin to use it on themselves, their family members, and their friends. It's just a, a wonderful healing modality. And we'll be talking a little bit more about homeopathy. I wanted to go into some basics as part of this webinar. There has been some questions regarding uh, microcurrent. So I just wanted to share with you and discuss initially um, some new items regarding microcurrent that you may not be aware of. When I started to do microcurrent, uh, I was using currents in the neighborhood of 400 to 500 microamps. Now, a microamp is really low to begin with. It's a millionth of an amp, and I was taught to never go higher than 500 microamps because of the work done by Dr. Cheng. He showed that higher levels of current above 500 microamps can actually retard cellular activity and slow cellular, cellular activity. So we began uh, using microcurrent of the 400 microamp amp range, then 200. But over the last 10 years or so, talking to my colleagues and friends who are doing microcurrent, uh, we have found that sometimes lower currents give better results. So presently, I'm using currents in the, in the range of 20 to 40 microamps. And you may be saying, well, Dr. Kondrat, how can that be? It's, it's so low. Well, remember, we're gently stimulating the body to heal. The other thing we've been incorporating is shorter treatment programs. Initially, we began uh, treatments using an hour treatment protocol, sometimes an hour and a half, even as long as two hours. And uh, some research has, has shown that maybe we don't need to have these long treatment program. So I've been reducing the programs to 30 minutes, in some cases, 15 minutes. And I'm in the process of evaluating the results, but it seems like the shorter programs are just as, a, as effective. So if you do have a one hour eye treatment and you're interested in reducing it to 30 minutes, please give the office a call and we can make those changes on your machine. I also find that in some cases, uh, we like to do the treatments twice a day, especially with glaucoma. I, I have noted and observed that uh, the treatments for glaucoma will last six to eight hours. And because we're dealing with pressure in the eye, that it may be more beneficial to do a shorter program twice a day. Another big uh, discovery is the use of microcurrent for detoxification. There, is, there have been some naturopathic doctors who have actually measured an increase in urinary secretion of heavy metals after doing certain microcurrent treatments. So now we do have some specific treatments for lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic, etc. So when uh, you do get your six hour urine for heavy metals, and if your urine does show an elevation of lead, mercury, or another heavy metal, we can um, uh, then specifically write a program for that metal. Now that is not to substitute your conventional treatment, whether you're getting chelation or some type of therapy to remove the heavy metals. This is an adjunctive treatment that I think can be beneficial. I'm also open for questions. So if you look at the control panel, and if you do have a question for me, just type it in uh, the control panel, and hopefully I'll see it. Right now I'm looking at the control panel. So at any time, 
If you need a clarification or you want some additional information, please um, type in your question and I'll address it. How about long-term microcurrent? Um, do I have to do microcurrent all my life? Do I have to continue to do microcurrent every day? Is it necessary for me to continue microcurrent? Well, microcurrent is anti-aging. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to slow the aging process. It's kind of like exercise. If you exercise every day, your body is going to get stronger. And once your body gets stronger, then it may not be necessary to exercise every day. Likewise with the microcurrent. We initially like you to use the microcurrent every day, but as your body gets stronger and as you begin to incorporate all the other facets of the program, then the microcurrent can be decreased, perhaps to every other day uh, or every other second or even every third or fifth day. But I do feel that most of you will need to continue the microcurrent, mainly because your body is aging, you have a predisposition to the eye problem, and the microcurrent is a valuable adjunctive therapy to help maintain your vision and help maintain that good ocular physiology to keep the visual system uh, functioning. One concern that many patients have is they have a fear that if they would stop the microcurrent, everything is going to revert back to where it was in the beginning. And that is not true. You know, the analogy with aging, if you're really overweight and out of shape and you begin an exercise program, you're going to lose that weight over time. You're going to get better strength and better health and vitality. But then if you stop exercising, it's not like in a matter of a couple of days, you're going to go back to where you started. It'll be a slow process. So what can you do to improve your overall health? What can you do to perhaps reduce the need for doing the microcurrent every day? And the big things are diet and your nutritional state. I'm a firm believer in our diet. You are what you eat and food is our best medicine. So avoid uh, food with preservatives, toxic products, and uh, make certain you avoid the genetically modified food, sugars, high fructose, corn syrup, etc. Et Proper hydration is essential to help detoxify your body. And if you have been determined to have heavy metals through the six-hour urine test, you need to undergo some type of a detoxification program. Um, and uh, the last item, and it really should not be the last item, in some cases it should be the first item, is reducing stress. We have to reduce stress. Stress is that uh, big culprit, that, that big factor that often uh, leads to disease and helps maintain our disease. And so we need to begin doing uh, uh, positive things to reduce stress. One of the best ways is microcurrent. Microcurrent relaxes the body, helps put you in a relaxed state, and all of you have a particular microcurrent program for stress. We can also customize that stress program. Um, if you're dealing with anger, uh, fear, or grief, uh, we can change some of the var variables with that program. So if you're interested in, um, in, in changing that, oh, we got some questions here. We can. Uh, first question is, if you have skin cream or arnica on the skin, how does it affect the microcurrent? Um, well, that's a good question because you have to be careful when you're putting any type of cream or lotion on the skin when you do microcurrent because the microcurrent can act as a carrier and take that substance into the body. So sometimes taking that substance into the body is good. So if you have Arnica cream, you want to get the Arnica into the body maybe to help with some inflammation uh, or tissue healing. 
But on the other hand, if you have some petroleum products uh, that have chemicals, uh, disinfectants, uh, preservatives, uh, and those are on the skin. Uh, you, I would not advise doing microcurrent because a lot of eyeliners and mascaras do have some heavy metal components, some oxides and toxic materials. So do not use those. Uh, the question is, should we take one day off a week of microcurrent or use the microcurrent every day of the week? I think it's always a good idea to take one day off uh, just to relax. Uh, but that has to be on an individual basis because some of you may need to do the microcurrent every day if um, you have inflammation or elevated pressure or you have active bleeding in the eye. But <clears throat> generally speaking, if we're treating a chronic problem that's been going on for many, many years and we're slowly rejuvenating the guy, it would be okay to take a day off. Um, another question is that the glaucoma microcurrent treatment at 40 minutes a day, can it be used twice a day? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, uh, I've, I've been reducing the, the, the programs more, so I feel more comfortable in doing the 20 to 30 minute treatment program twice a day. But then again, it depends on your pressure. Uh, some people are doing the microcurrent for glaucoma mainly to lower the pressure in addition to stimulating the vitality of the optic nerve. So if your pressure is elevated, then I would recommend you consider doing the microcurrent twice a day. But I think it would be much safer to do a 20 or 30 minute program twice a day. So you may want to talk to the office and we may have to re reprogram uh, your machine for that. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about homeopathy. And I hope that this is going to get some of you interested in the acute care homeopathic course. Homeopathy is sometimes hard to explain. It's not herbal treatment. It's not vitamin therapy. It's a specific system of medicine based on the principle of like cures like. Homeos means similar and pathos means su suffering. So homeopathy means similar suffering. Now this idea of like curing like goes back to the time of Hippocrates who stated through the like disease is produced and through the application of the like it is cured. So it wasn't until um, the end of the 18th century that a brilliant German doctor, chemist, Samuel Hahnemann, start experimentation, which led to the system of medicine uh, as we now know as homeopathy. While translating medical text, he's noticed that the substance Peruvian bark or cinchona was listed as causing symptoms such as numbness of the extremities, anxieties, similar to the symptoms of malaria, which it was used to cure. So Hahnemann um, kind of recognized this law as similar. So this Peruvian bark or cinchona produced symptoms very similar to malaria. So based on the law of similars, then if you would take Peruvian bark, uh, if you had malaria, it should help treat that condition. So Hahnemann uh, based a new system on med medicine on certain laws and principles. And homeopathy, one of the things I like about homeopathy, it's really based on laws. And when I studied homeopathy, I used the same textbooks and the same reference material that has been used over 300 years ago, because a true law of medicine will not change. Uh, it, unfortunately, modern medicine, things are changing constantly. The drugs that are good today are outdated tomorrow. And homeopathy, we use the same medicines that were used 300 years ago. So the principles are the law of similars, the law of proving, which I'll talk about, 
the law of potentization, and the law of a single remedy. Hahnemann stated that any substance which produces specific toxic symptoms in a healthy person, when given in its full strength form, will cure a sick person with those symptoms, even in a very dilute form. And Hahnemann noted, and he did experiments, that will a substance still work if it's diluted? And he did a series of experiments where he successively diluted a substance and still administered it. And lo and behold, it had the same effect. And of course, this goes against um, our logical thinking uh, because we have been taught that if you take one aspirin tablet for a headache and it helps the headache somewhat, two aspirins will work even better. We've been taught more is better. And a lot of people have that same misconception about microcurrent. Well, if, you know, the microcurrent is helping my eye, give me a higher current. Uh, let me do the microcurrent more frequently. But unfortunately, that is not true. I think many aspects of energy medicine deal with this uh, philosophy that less is, is better. Less is more effective because we're trying to gently stimulate the body. So Hahnemann did discover that by diluting a substance, uh, it would have the same effect, and in some cases, it would have a better effect. So let's talk more about the law of similars. When you get a cold or allergies, your eyes water, you get a burning a nasal discharge, and it's treated with a homeopathic remedy, Allium Sepa, which is made from the common red onion. Because what happens when you're cutting or peeling an onion? Your eyes water and burn and you get a nasal discharge. So based on a lot of similars, uh, that onion uh, produces symptoms in a healthy person. And so whenever you acquire these symptoms in a disease state, that same item, the onion, will treat those in a diseased state. Ipecac is known for inducing vomiting in the cases of accidental poisoning. And this is found in many households whenever children ingest poison, they take Ipecac and it induces vomiting. But homeopathically, it's actually used to alleviate the systems of nausea and vomiting. So another example of uh, the law of similars. When you're stung by a honeybee, you get angry, red swelling and burning. Uh, and so if you develop a rash or an allergic reaction with red swelling and burning, then the homeopathic apis is used to treat this. Once again, the law of similars. Now, Homeopathic remedies are not just randomly picked out of the air. Uh, they go through a whole process called homeopathic provings. And these are very, very scientific provings. In fact, some homeopathic doctors will say that the homeopathic remedies have been proven and tested in much more detail and longer than any traditional medicine. You know, we now know that drugs have to be approved by the FDA and they have clinical trials and uh, they're rather extensive. But if you look at any homeopathic remedy, the amount of testing and measurements that have been done with the homeopathic remedy, it far exceeds that in uh, traditional drugs. To give you an example, if a drug company is interested in a hypertensive medication. Well, many of the studies are done in animals. Toxicology studies are done in animals. And we know that animals have a different physiology and it may not be the best way to measure toxic reactions. Second, a particular drug is measured in the disease state. So if they're looking for a drug for hypertension, they get a group of people with high blood pressure and they're administered to drug. Um, so 
the, the accuracy is kind of limited. When we do a homeopathic proving, we get a group of healthy volunteers and they're given a homeopathic remedy and they record their symptoms. They keep on taking the remedy until they prove the remedy. And we record all of their symptoms, mental, emotional, and physical. So if I do a proving uh, with a group of healthy people and it's an unknown substance, they take it in a very weak dilution or concentration to take it for a period of time until symptoms are developed. And these symptoms then uh, become the remedy picture to treat a disease state. So if a group of healthy people uh, develop uh, anger, uh, restlessness, uh, throbbing headache, and a fever, then that same homeopathic remedy will be used to treat someone who presents with those symptoms. So when we do approving, this information is carefully recorded and hundreds of people will do approvings and this makes up our Materia Medica, which is kind of like a textbook. So when you look up a homeopathic remedy, uh, there are hundreds of pages dealing with all types of symptoms, peculiar symptoms to common symptoms. Um, and this becomes our remedy picture and this information is then used to study symptoms that a person will present with. And in homeopathy, we look for the peculiar symptoms. So for example, if you have a stomach ache, that's just a general symptom, but if you have a stomach ache uh, three o'clock every morning and it's aggravated by eating potatoes, that has more interest to a homeopathic doctor because then we can look in these homeopathic proving books and then we can usually find somebody who's had those peculiar symptoms and then we can match the remedy and we give that remedy to you and that remedy will have a positive effect. Now the symptoms are recorded in text known as a repertory. So you can actually look up symptoms. So you can look up abdominal pain three o'clock in the morning and it'll give you a list of all the remedies that have been known to have those symptoms. So you're probably thinking, ah, oh, this is pretty cool. I can just look in the repertory and find a remedy and take it and the end of story. But unfortunately, there are many, many remedies for each symptom. <clears throat> Sometimes we have thousands of remedies for one, for a symptom. Let's say, for example, glaucoma. Uh, there are maybe well over 100 different homeopathic remedies. So we have to look at different aspects of the patient in order to select the proper remedy. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about how homeopathic remedies are made. So one of the reasons why homeopathic remedies are diluted, Hahnemann did discover that small amounts of the substance still had a therapeutic effect, even if they were diluted. But he also found that the side effects become less when the remedies are diluted. The homeopathic remedies, when they're diluted, seem to be more specific for the symptoms and there are less side effects. Um, so in traditional medicine, there are side effects from every pharmaceutical drug that you take. In fact, if you read the package insert, there are usually hundreds and hundreds of side effects. And in homeopathy, we don't have those side effects because the medicine is diluted. It's more of an energetic, it's more of a gentle catalyst to help the body to heal. Another thing that Hahnemann discovered, which is hard to understand, is this idea of potinization. He found that if substances were shaken vigorously during dilution, it's also called succussion, energy would be released. And many of you who are taking homeopathic remedies have to succuss the remedy every day before taking your dose. This gently increases the energy. You're putting energy into the substance. So you're gradually increasing the energy 
So each day the homeopathic remedy will become a little bit stronger. So we're gently pushing your body more towards healing. When we do dilute these homeopathic remedies, they're usually diluted to such an extent that no material substance is left, only the energy of the original material. And this is also difficult to, for most people to believe because how can sub something work if it has no physical substance? Um, and all, believe it or not, all of our homeopathic remedies are approved by the FDA. They have been grandfathered in. Uh, when the FDA was established, the existing homeopathic remedies that were used uh, by doctors were grandfathered in by the Food and Drug Administration. So homeopathic remedies are legal, according to the FDA. And all homeopathic remedies are made according to strict standards set up by the Food and Drug Administration. The remedies are made from plant, animal, and mineral substances, uh, depending on the law of similars. A common homeopathic remedy that I used is made from the snake, Crotalus hortus, or the rattlesnake. Because when you're bit by the rattlesnake, you get hemorrhages throughout your body, including your eye. So I have found this is a good homeopathic remedy for hemorrhages in the eye. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody who has an eye hemorrhage needs Crotalus hortus, because once again, if you look up hemorrhages, there may be hundreds of homeopathic remedies that can produce a hemorrhage. So we treat the individual, their nature, their personality, other physical symptoms that coincide with the hemorrhage are important. So each homeopathic remedy bears a national drug code number and uh, uh, assuring that they were made according to standards. Now, does homeopathy have a placebo effect? You know, these remedies are so dilute, most doctors and scientists say they, they just can't work. But there have been a number of studies showing that homeopathic works. Um, two journals, the Lancet Journal and the British Medical Journal, two peer-reviewed journals, had articles, uh, scientific articles, that have demonstrated that homeopath homeopathy works. The Lancet Medical Journal published a most significant and comprehensive review. This was in September 20th, 1997. And they studied um, over 186 studies of homeopathy. 119 of them were double blind or randomized studies. And the researchers found that by pulling uh, these studies together, that homeopathic remedies had a 2.4 times greater effect than a placebo, which means that homeopathy works much better than a placebo. Even in traditional medicine, studies have shown that there's about a 30% placebo effect. No matter what is done in traditional medicine, there has a placebo effect. So I tell people, don't negate the placebo effect. If the placebo effect works, enjoy it because it's helping you. But here is a very good scientific study that shows that homeopathic medicines had a 2.4 times greater effect than a placebo. There also has been some breakthrough discoveries in quantum physics um, showing that water retains memory when substances are diluted and shaken. So even though there's no homeopathic material or physical material present, um, the energy of that substance is there. Now, in homeopathy, we like to take one remedy for all of your symptoms. There are some alternative doctors that will give you multiple homeopathic remedies depending on what's going on for, with you. So that you may get a homeopathic remedy for your digestion. You may get a homeopathic remedy for your headache. You may get a homeopathic remedy for your eye. That's not the way homeopathy was meant to be utilized. 
It's individualization, one remedy for you. One homeopathic remedy, if it's the correct remedy, should treat many aspects about your health. It treats you as a whole person, mentally, emotionally, as well as physically. So if you're anxious or anger and you have macular degeneration, digestive problems, arthritis, and you can't sleep at night, one homeopathic remedy should be able to treat all of those symptoms. There's also the concept of the vital force. Um, and this is the life force of the body. And Hahnemann felt that this life force was essential for good health. And because of changes in the vital force or the life force, that was the cause of disease. So one of the things that homeopathy does is to help uh, maintain balance in that life force. And the body has a certain intelligence. So when we do develop a disease or a symptom, it is essential, even though it may be uncomfortable for the body, the body is trying to maintain a balance in the life force. So when, if you get diarrhea, there's a reason for the diarrhea because maybe there's toxins in your body and it's essential to get rid of those toxins to help maintain balance. If you have a fever, the same thing, the body needs the fever to maintain balance. So in homeopathy, we respect the wisdom of the body. We respect what the body's trying to do. And then we give it medications which help support what it's trying to do. So if you have a fever, a cough or a cold, the fever is the body's defense mechanism to burn up the infection and to get the body healthy. So we actually give you a homeopathic remedy that might cause a fever to support the body what it's trying to do. Um, people are vulnerable to different diseases. Some people have amazing strong constitutions, rarely getting disease. They're very, very healthy. Uh, there's a genetic inheritance, which is an important factor in the strength of our constitution. So illnesses and weaknesses run in families are often passed down through generations. So homeopathy looks at your underlying constitution, your genetic inheritance, your susceptibility. Because in homeopathy, we believe that diseases can be transmitted uh, from generation to generation through our genetic makeup and our DNA. And this is called uh, miasms in homeopathy. So each homeopathic remedy has a certain miasmatic tendency. So in homeopathy, by strengthening the weak areas of your constitution, uh, we can help change your pattern of susceptibility. So therefore not acting, acting curatively, but as a prevention of disease. So many of you have a susceptibility to eye problems. You may be very, very strong and healthy physically, but you have an eye problem. So for some reason, there's a genetic weakness. There's a weakness in your constitution, which makes your eye more susceptible. So we select homeopathic remedies that kind of have an affinity to your eye, that when you take these remedies, not only will it help strengthen your body, but it will also help strengthen your eye and your constitution. Um, Herring's law of cure is an important law in homeopathy because this helps us follow the progress of your treatment. That healing uh, progresses usually from the deepest level, mental, emotional, to external. So when you take a homeopathic remedy, we much rather have you have a better sense of wellness um, more energy, a calmness, and then maybe develop a skin problem or a discharge because, you know, the body is healing from inside outward. Healing often progresses from reverse order of the original appearance. So if you had an accident and you had a lot of swelling in your leg and it was treated with steroids or suppressive 
methods, and now you have arthritis, if that arthritis is treated, the swelling may come back because the swelling wasn't treated properly. But usually when there's a reverse order of the appearance, it's, it's very mild and it's just a very for a brief period of time. Also, healing tends to progress from above downward. For example, uh, symptoms or lesions or skin rashes on your face will disappear first and they're last to leave uh, the bottom part of your body, your feet. So conventional medicine um, treats symptoms and manages disease as a separate part of um, your body. So when you go to the eye doctor, the eye doctor just treats the eye. When you go to the cardiologist, he just treats the heart. Traditional medicine looks at you as a separate part. So a patient with uh, cystitis, uh, eczema, and depression, they would be treated by parts. Antibiotics for the cystitis, cortisone for the eczema, and antidepressants for the depression. Three different medicines, three separate parts. But in homeopathy, we looked at all of this disturbance as one condition. The cystitis, eczema, and depression is one problem, so you would get one medicine. Another interesting thing is that if the disease can't be diagnosed in traditional medicine, it can't be treated. If your tests are normal, you're in perfect health health, but you may feel terrible. And homeopathy isn't like that. We take every symptom as a serious component of you. So if you have a headache and the CT scan is normal and the x-rays are normal, we still treat that headache. Uh, traditional medicine um, in many cases doesn't have that approach. If the laboratory tests are normal, you're in good health and you don't need to be treated unless you're given Prozac or something like that. In many uh, states, there are no really good treatments. Uh, for example, viral disease, antibiotics are useless in traditional medicine. And many eye problems in traditional medicine, they don't have a good treatment. Uh, the majority of cases of macular degeneration, the eye doctor will tell you there's no treatment. But in homeopathy, there are many, many treatments. We're improving your constitution. We're improving your vitality to slow the process of the disease and in many cases, reverse it. In traditional medicine, treatment for recurrent problems do very little to prevent future incidences of disease. Uh, for example, if you have uh, a cold or a flu and you're treated with antibiotics, it does nothing to prevent the recurrence. Homeopathy, every time we treat your disease, we're also strengthening you to prevent a recurrence. There's other problems with conventional medicine, drug side effects, adverse reactions, bacterial resistance to antibiotics. The list goes on and on. In homeopathy, we do not have these issues. There's also cost. Healthcare is extremely expensive. Homeopathy, we not only treat the disease for a lot less, we're strengthening you so uh, the disease will not reoccur and you will become stronger. Now, homeopathy can be used as a complement to conventional treatment. And I have always taken this approach. I wear two hats. One hat is my traditional eye doctor and the other one is the homeopathic eye doctor. So in some cases, if you have a retinal detachment or a problem with the eye, you do need surgery, you do need an injection. But I'm a firm believer that in most situations, uh, using an alternative or homeopathic approach is much, much better. Um, homeopathy can be curative. In many cases, when you take the right homeopathic remedy, um, the disease ends. Um, you know, 
Traditional medicine really does nothing to try to cure diabetes, high blood pressure, or asthma. You're maintained with medication. Homeopathy makes an attempt to actually cure the disease. When I had severe adult onset asthma, traditional medicine told me there was no cure, make sure I would take all my medication, don't miss a day, otherwise you'll get into trouble. Well, when I had my homeopathic treatment, it cured me of my asthma, and that convinced me that homeopathy can treat and cure chronic disease. Homeopathy is also completely safe. Babies and pregnant women can take homeopathy without the risks of any danger. Homeopathy is all natural. Homeopathy works in harmony with your immune system, unlike conventional medicine, which suppresses the immune system. Um, homeopathy, homeopathic remedies are not addictive. Uh, once you begin to have a cure, once your symptoms leave, you no longer need a homeopathic remedy. And homeopathy is holistic. It treats all the symptoms as one picture. Uh, it addresses the root cause, not just the symptoms. So I'm very excited that we're offering you an opportunity to learn the basics of homeopathy. You'll learn these principles of healing that will change you and your health forever. Uh, the Homeopathic Acute Care course is beginning October the 27th. We're going to be having monthly meetings and the webinars will be recorded uh, for you to view at a later date. And you can get information here at healingthei.com forward slash course. And the tuition is $650 one payment or $120 a month for six months. So I hope uh, some of you will be interested in this course. In addition to the webinars, you'll be getting course material, some audio CDs. Uh, you will have some reading assignments um, and uh, homework to do. So we'll be meeting once a month, uh, but in the interim between the monthly meetings, uh, you will have homework. Uh, okay. In between the webinars, continue your treatment, continue a positive attitude regarding your eye disease. And remember, miracles do happen and the body has an amazing ability to heal itself. Uh, microcurrent, homeopathy, and light therapy are powerful catalysts to get your body healing and get your health going in the right direction. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, everybody have a wonderful Labor Day.